Now, so far we've looked at a lot of apex predators from fish to dinosaurs and most things in between. But now it's time for the mammals to get some love because now we're gonna be looking at the biggest mammalian land predator to have ever lived. Nearly 100 years ago, an expedition took place in Mongolia that was led by the famous Roy Chapman Andrews, who actually served as inspiration for Indiana Jones. A lot of specimens were collected from this expedition, including the very first dinosaur eggs ever discovered, and a partial skull from the Erdin Manhaf Formation, which Henry Fairfield Osborne described and named as Andrusarchus mongoliensis. Now, Osborne knew this was a kind of mammal, but what kind of mammal was it? Well, part of the large size estimates were down to the fact that Andrusarchus was originally assigned as a member of the Mesonychidae. The Mesonychids were a group of small to large sized mammals that are most commonly seen as wolves with hooves. Given this association that Andrusarchus had, Osborne used the size of Masonics to estimate the animal's total length from the skull and came out with a number of 3.82 metres or 12.5 feet long and a height of around 1.89 metres or 6.2 feet. However, further studies 40 years later actually found that Andrusarchus was more related to a group known as the Intellidonts. Now this group is one that has gained some notoriety in recent years with their more commonly used nicknames, Terminator Pigs or Hell Pigs. Now members of this group, which you can find out more about here, are not technically pigs, nor is it a group that Andrusarchus actually belongs in. But the study done in 1966 by Schlale and Gold placed Andrusarchus within its own brand new group, the Andrusarchids, of which this animal is its only member to date. But it is a group that was found to be a sister taxon to the Intellidonts. So with this in mind, a new size estimate was proposed of 3.2 metres, or 10.4 foot long, and 1.4 metres, or 4.5 feet tall. So this brings into question the rest of the body, what did it look like? Well, again, the body length alone is disputed at between 10 and 12 feet, let alone the actual structure of the rest of the animal. We really only have the skull to go on and no extant relatives to compare it to. So this is where phylogenetics of extinct relatives have to come into play. First up, it had a fucking massive head. Even in comparison to the rest of the body, the head was likely really weird looking with regards to its head relative to the body size. The body itself likely looked, for lack of a better term, generically mammalian. Somewhere in between a hippo and a large carnivora like a wolf or a lion. Which then brings us down to those feet. As a close relative of the Entelodonts, Andrew Sarkis was very lightly hooved. Now we're not talking hardcore hooving like many of today's undulates such as giraffes or horses. But each digit that it walked on was covered in a keratinous sheath which completely covered the parts that made contact with the ground as opposed to foot pads. Andrusarchus was also likely covered in fur, as many mammals were and still are, but we don't actually know the extent of this covering since, again, there's a lack of findings and not really many close relatives to get a clear view on this. Now, Andrusarchus was found in the Erdin Manha Formation in China. Now, this formation was from the Eocene, approximately 47.8 to 41.2 million years ago. As during the Eocene, we see that much of China was transitioning into its modern monsoonal climate being made up of subtropical forests with some river and lake systems. Found here alongside Andrusarchus have been some species of catfish, some freshwater turtles and crocodilians, and some birds primarily related to large flightless families and guinea fowl. But like many environments at this time, the main dominators were the mammals, namely the artiodactyls and perissodactyls, or as they're more often referred to as the even-toed undulates and the odd-toed undulates. Now most of the animals here were from extinct groups, so seems somewhat alien, but still closely related enough to extant groups for us to get an idea on what these animals were like. There were various helohyids, artiodactyls with superficial similarities to pigs, tapirulids, which are close relatives of today's tapirs, and a beast known as gobiotherium, a uintothere with no real modern close relatives. You also had parasirotherids, which were large, long-necked, hornless rhinos, and brontotheres, which weren't technically rhinos, but looked very much like them. There are also a wide range of the aforementioned Mesonychians, the extinct group of omnivores that superficially resembled hooved canines with some otter-like species, as well as oxanids and myocids, which were small, ferret-like omnivores. 
Getting even smaller, we see many rodents, namely cetinodactyloids, which are small rat-like rodents, Chrysetids, which are more on the hamster end of rodents, and some stem lagomorphs, or rabbits. So with this highly diverse size range and number of groups, how did Andrew Sarkis actually fit into this trophic system? Well, again, this is quite a difficult question given our lack of specimens. What we do know is that Andrew Sarkis was an omnivore and as the largest animal of the area to partake in meat eating, likely had no natural predators as a fully grown adult. The main question here is to what extent was Andrew Sarkis a predator itself? This question crops up a lot with extinct animals. <clears throat> I'm looking at you, T-Rex. And people often think it's an either-or situation. The reality, though, is that no carnivore or omnivore that we know of is exclusively a predator or a scavenger. Many more are specialised for one over the other, but no animal would pass up a free meal when it presents itself, nor will they just wait around for something to drop dead in front of it. From what we can tell, there doesn't appear to be many features that show that Andrew Sarkis was built to specialise in either. The teeth are not only good enough for an omnivorous lifestyle, but also likely strong enough to handle biting bone, a common feature for scavengers. But also the sheer size of this animal is not something commonly seen in animals more on the scavenging end. Of course this does mean it could bully away any animal it wanted to from a carcass, and we don't actually have any postcranial material to show us what kind of adaptations it had for predation. So unfortunately this one is a definite... Uh -huh. So this means that yet again we can sit around twiddling our thumbs waiting for new fossils to crop up, or we can actually get debating down below. Let me know your thoughts on the lifestyle of Andrew Sarkis, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys next time.